Isn't 27? You turn there in your Bibles, on your phone, or whatever. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. It says this. It says, um, Jesus said, this was Mary and Martha. Lazarus had passed away. And they were questioning Jesus because they went to their brother, of course. And then so he said this to them, to, to Martha. He said, um, well, verse 25 says, let me just skip to there. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. Say that with me. I think we should have it on a t-shirt. I am the resurrection and the life. Now look what he says. He who believes in, in me will live even though he dies. And, whatever, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Hallelujah. And then the question Jesus asked Martha at that moment is, do you believe? Right? And so I want to, I think God, we have to go past, we have to recognize that Jesus not only, he said at that moment, he hasn't died yet, right? He didn't die on the cross yet, he didn't resurrect, but he said, listen, because of last, I'm going to show you that I am the resurrection, and I am the life. This is the only place in the Bible that this, this wording is. John writes it this way. I am the resurrection. So, he, so we look at what Jesus did on the cross. He died for our sins. Right? And I love what God's doing in the lives of the people in our church. It's just amazing. I love people are, are examining themselves in Christ. They're looking at themselves. They're repenting. Right? We've talked about that many times even in our, in our missional community. What is repentance? You know? And we, and we get the, the, the uh, just the, was it last Saturday? Wednesday we said it. What's the definition of repentance? It's like turning away from our old life. This is our old life. Now we're going to follow Jesus. And I really believe it's deeper than that. I think it's like change our thinking, changing our spirit, that we're no longer desiring things of our old life, and Jesus can change us, and we now desire the things of our new life. Amen? So he said, I'm the resurrection, and I think we have to remember that he died and paid the penalty of your sins, your guilt, and everything we go through. Amen? Amen. But then it says, I am the life. Why did he add, I am the life? Right? And then he goes over and he meets Mary and he meets Martha and he, right? he says, I know he's dead. He's only sleeping. Some of his apostles even questioned that. You know, he even said, to, uh, you know, hey, he's, he's dead, but he, I mean, he's only asleep. And he questioned that, right? In the natural, he's dead, but he's just said he's asleep and he's going to be alive. And he goes and speaks to that grave. What happened? He came out of that grave, right? He was alive. He lived a, new, a different life now. I was dead, but I was alive. And you and me were dead in our sins, and now we're alive in Christ. Amen? Holly, what was Lazarus' life like after he was raised from the dead? He probably didn't worry about nothing, right? He probably had the joy of the Lord. He probably was dancing all the time. I don't know what I would do, but I tell you, when I was saved, my life changed, and the joy of the Lord was part of me for, for till to this day. I mean, we can get down sometimes. Life does have its curves. We didn't expect eight inches of rain. There's more water in the basement again. He called me. I'm like, here we go again. You know, Lord, what's going on? Right? We always do the job like Mary and Martha go, Jesus, if you were here, this wouldn't have happened. Right? And we can say, Jesus, if you weren't here, why didn't you protect this building? We can question God in every area. Jesus, I lost my job. What are you doing? Jesus, what is happening in my life? We question Jesus all the time. But we're saying, if Jesus said, if you would follow me, if you would seek after me, I'm going to give you a new life. Now, we have to repent of our sins. Come on. We all know that. But we found out from sermon that Pastor Andrew preached a little while ago that that's just elementary stuff. Let's get done repenting. Let's get done being go over our sin. Let's go back, quit going about back to reviewing our old life and go to Jesus again with repentance and say, let's live a new life in Christ Jesus. I think that's what God's doing in this building. I think we're having a new life. I think God's taking this old building and we're going to make it new. And we're going to have the joy of the Lord to be part of this congregation. And we're going to see a miracle happen time after time. And the joy because we're, we believe that God has a plan over just having water in our basement. Amen. Amen. God has a bigger plan for you going over your sin over and over and over and over in your own life. Right? So it's done. I'm looking at Jesus and we're going to have a new life. A new life. And I look at it, so that reminds me of John 10.10. 10. 
And you go back to John 10, 10, and it says this. Remember, he talks about the goats and the sheep, the ones that fall after me, the ones that hear my voice. Even when a strange person comes in, the sheep are going to scatter because they, hear, they know who the shepherd's voice is. So we need to know that, who the shepherd is. I think most of us here do. And when he says in 10, 10, he says, um, let me read here. It says, uh, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. Who's the thief? The enemy, right? The enemy doesn't. But I have come that you may have life, and my Bible says to his fullest, and some says abundantly, right? So now that Jesus had came, and he's going to die for us, we hear his voice, and we follow him now, that we'll have abundant life in Christ Jesus. What does that mean, to have abundant life in Christ Jesus? I think the abundant life is in Galatians, when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and one of the fruit of the spirits of abundant life is joy. Huh? One of, one of the fruits of the Spirit that we can have, even though it looks like a mess, walk down the stairs, it looks like a mess. Maybe even in our life, it looks like a mess right now. We're hurting inside. We have problems. This is going on. Right? I, I want to say, today, I think, like I said the other night, when after this phone call, I'm done. Yeah. We're going to fix this. Right? We're not going to put a patch out anymore. God doesn't want you to have a patch on your problems or your sin or whatever's going on in your life. He wants to fix it once and for all. Quit struggling with the old life and get on with the joy of full life living in Jesus. Amen? There's some happiness in this thing called Jesus. Amen? There's a joy that comes in and go and serving and loving. I mean, yesterday, it was amazing. There wasn't, everybody's working. I just passed out water because he told me I couldn't do anything and they were telling me of my shoulder, and we can pray for healing in the, at the end of the service today, and we're going to pray for that. We're going to pray for healing for you today, and we're going to pray for healing in this building. Amen. Right? Jackie's back there. She can't even sit. She's so much pain because of her back, and her, her spinal cord and her SI joint is, is, is infected, so she's in so much pain. You know, we look going downstairs, we see we got this wall corner over here, we got this corner over here. That's, I don't know why that, that's got to be something spiritual, but anyway, I'm going to make a big thing out of it. That corner needs to get fixed, and this corner needs to be fixed. Let's not have a low point in life. Let's raise the door up a couple feet and have a high point so the water can't get in. Yeah. Amen? Let's go to the high ground and know what God has for us victory up there. Amen? Let's not get, hang out in the valley all the time. We're not in the shadow of death. We're not going backwards. We're going forward. Amen? And I believe that's what God's doing. He's doing a new thing here for you and me. He wants to walk, up, walk in newness of life. So if you're struggling with your old life all the time, it's, this is all, it's over today. I'm done. I'm tired of messing with your old life. I'm serious. It's time to have, walk in victory. It's time to move forward. Amen? God's going to do a new thing in your life, in my life, and the life of this church. And this church, this life of this church includes this building. You know, I would think about it over and over. We talk about selling the building, moving somewhere else. We talk about it over and over. It never happened. God placed this building in this neighborhood because these people need to know Jesus. Yeah. Right? I'm not, and I'm telling you a miracle. Let me tell you a miracle. just happened. Our neighbor, who just hates this church a few years ago, like this is my retirement area. And you have this parking lot here and the lights in the parking lot gets in my bedroom window. And she, I mean, she complained about everything. I walk over there and ask her about her flower base. I want to learn about flowers. Not really. I just want to start the conversation with her. That's my heart. And I sat there and I said, what kind of flowers are those? Or plants are those? Hostas of some sort. I knew what they were. I just want to start a conversation. I stood there for 15 minutes before she even acknowledged me. I did not move. Because I'm sales. I know the last person to speak will lose. And I know she's going to say something. So she lost. And this year, this is now 13 years, we, we would give Easter baskets out at Easter time with candy and a little message from our church, and she'd bring it back and put it on the port for right there. You know what I did? I took it back to her. I said, it's just candy. It's nothing going to change. You're, you're not going to hear your husband going like that in the back of the house. I'm, I'm good, right? So I did it, right? Newness, there's joy in God. So anyway... I mean, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. I mean, a miracle. This year, 
Somebody put that little, you see that little red sign out there that says slow down because there's kids, in, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, little words. So she put it in our hallway. I didn't know she did it. That had been there for a month. I, I, didn't, I, would, I was ready to throw it away. I, and I picked it up and I was heading to the trash can and the Holy Spirit said no. So I walked around the building and I stuck it all the way up by our property line. Because I didn't want that on a church. I don't know why I did. I just did. I knew somebody put it there and I didn't want to do it. You know, I was like a little rebellious too. You know what I mean? Just like you are. <laughs> and um, I put up there. And you know what? The, in a, in less, than, less than two or three minutes, she came out and was like, Oh, Pastor Bobby, put the sign up. Oh, here's a, she was all excited. I put the sign up. I'm like, what is going on right now, God? This is crazy. Like, she's like so happy that I put a piece of sign out on our front thing. We better edit all this out of this. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll post this one, okay? All right, thank you. This is just for you guys, all right? Because this is a miracle, all right? This is a miracle. Then she tells me we're happy. she's in charge of the rubbish sale here in Sunset Village. And I said immediately, I'll make all the flyers for you. Because I ran the rubbish sale about 10 years ago. So you pass up, you make flyers of all the addresses in the neighborhood, and every site gets some of the flyers. So when people come by junk, they can find out where the next place to buy their treasures are, at, right? So I told her we'd do it, right? And then I, uh, we had this one little printer, it's a color printer, so I want to do the color. And then Pastor Andrew and I were talking, we just did it, and I introduced her to Pastor Andrew because, you know, he's the man and created things, because I just have an idea, I don't know how to work it out, but, you know. Let's make this. And he goes, well, we can't do it like that. Dad, we got to do this and this and this. Okay, fine. Just do it. It looks good. And he did it. It looks really good. So we've uh, we got to print it. Not here, but we print them at the uh, Kinko's, right? When she was so happy. So happy. I've mean, never seen her so happy in my whole life. <laughs> Someone enjoys flowing over on her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 10, 13 years of prayers at work in. <laughs> right? And so... Uh, and Pastor Andrew's been saying for two years, we need to go to Sunset Village meetings and get to know our neighbors more and more. Right? And I'm like, yes, I can do that. You know, it's a good idea. You know? And, and anyway, so him and Rachel went uh, a couple weeks ago, and they had nothing to say, nothing but, she had nothing but good things to say about Pastor Bob, Capital City Church, Pastor Andrew, and everything that we did, like four different times she mentioned us, right? That's a miracle. God is doing something around us if we just open up our eyes and get, follow Jesus into these places, and we'll see miracles after miracles happen. To me, this is a miracle because she would, even, she, would even, she would complain that the lights in the parking lot was on her house. I'm like, lady, there's like so many other things to worry about. But, you know, but I was like, I'm trying to be compassionate, but I'm like, this is silly. But I'm going to tell you, about three years after that happened, when she said that, her and her husband were out there on a ladder trying to trim her trees. And I walked out, I was like, we had a pastor's meeting here. I walked out of the building and I saw them and I yelled, stop what you're doing. And he's on the top. She's like, get up higher, get up higher. And he, she, he's shaking and he's trying to cut this little branch. And I'm like, get out. So I went up there, cut the branch for them, dragged it to the street, you know, and then went back in and me. I just thought, just little things like that, that God will use if you just listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm way off what I'm supposed to speak about, but anyway. Amen. God's doing a new life. I want you today, this is from Pastor Bob, for you. Paid for. I just skip the fourth one. I want this for you. I know Pastor Andrew, so I'm saying this is what I want for you. I want a new life. It's good to bend your knee at the cross and ask God to forgive you, but get up and do something. Right? Come on. That's literally going to get old old-fashioned preaching right here. Well, I'm, I'm, trying to be, I'm, trying to be I'm trying to be culturally relevant today. I want to update what the Word of God says. It's like it never changes. The Word is culturally relevant. We have to look at it in our lives saying, okay, I need to follow Jesus. I need to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, body, so I'm clear and close here. I need to love my neighbor as myself. We have to have a new life, a new purpose. Quit being selfish and look at what God is telling you to do. Acts 5.22, the angel of the Lord said, Go stand in the temple court and say to the people, 
uh, and tell people about this new life. Let me read that again. Acts 5.20 says, An angel of the Lord said, Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people about this new life. If you're always just repenting all the time, nobody wants to know about that part of your life. I was a sinner. I did this wrong. I did this wrong. I did this wrong. I got this problem. I got that problem. Right? People want to hear that. They want to hear about the victory of the repented life. Amen? They want to hear the joy. Well, we're going to teach them about the cross, too. Don't tell them to get wrong. We're telling them how they can, get, they can have a new life, right? They need to go to the cross, but they don't stay there. That was happening with the law. The people were going to the temple over and over and over. It was like they were you know, sacrificing lambs and, and all that stuff to, to get cleansed. And, the only, and Jesus said, I, I did that for you. Once in a while, I died for the sins of the whole world. So don't have to worry about going back and repenting sometimes. We're going to come and we're going to walk in victory with Jesus. We have a new life. Romans 6, 4 says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. So yeah, we go to baptism in repentance. We go get baptized and say, yeah, we're going to follow Jesus. And then we have a new life to follow. I want to encourage you to figure out what the new life is. Where's the joy, the happiness, the, the serving, the, the calling the lost to Jesus? All those things are our whole life. It's a new life. We have a new purpose, a new direction. What am I supposed to do for Jesus? Follow Him. He will tell you exactly what to do. That's why we're not afraid about the plan. Because already, God has provided some amazing things. I mean, this young man that came to inspect the building, who's a contractor, who actually is a sponsor to one of the golf uh, outings for our district, so they have sponsored our district golf outing. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to find that out. Uh, they built Blackhawk Church, which was a, they met here in this building, and so I believe it's the exact contract. When I showed him this blueprint, he turned like white. Like, he was like, this is the... This is the guy I'm going to go talk to, the guy that just, the, the architect that made those blueprints. This is the guy I'm going to go talk to about this building. I said, do you need a copy of this? No, we got a copy of our file. He just took a picture of the signature and took it back to him. So he said, I'll talk, he goes like this, he says to me, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow, right? So he said, he goes, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And I said, well, tomorrow's Saturday. He goes, Monday, I'll be here, I'll let you know Monday. He's like, <laughs> He was going to get on it. Like, he couldn't believe that, he, that this company wow. most likely built this building. I'm going to end with Ezra 9.9. I'm going to end with Ezra 9.9, and we're going to pray this morning together. I don't know if we can make a circle in this building or just gather right here or whatever we can do. But we're going to come up here. We're going to come together. Maybe just hold hands together. And we're going to pray for your new life and the new life of this church building. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I believe that's God. That's what God wants to do. He wants to, you, your life not to be the same. Yes. And I believe that. That's what this is all about. Water, the flood, the, the pulling all up, you know, exposing all the damaged parts of our building. That's all about something new, a new beginning, starting over. I love. I, I God does that for us. He gives us a redo, right? Sometimes we mess up. We get dead. Yeah. He says, "Don't stay in your sin." Because I'm kind of. Don't forget what I did on the cross for you. Now I'm starting to walk a new life, right? Don't go back to that old pig pen, but God wants to bring a new life, amen? Uh, Though we are slaves, Ezra 99, our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. Israel was in bondage at the time. He has shown us kindness in the sight of the king of Persia. He has granted us new life to build, rebuild the house of God and repair the ruins and he has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. I mean, I believe that's for us this morning. That God wants to rebuild our lives. And he wants to rebuild this building. Amen. And I believe he's going to use every one of us to do that. And all those other people that came and helped is such a blessing uh, to see what happened. I didn't have to lift a finger yesterday. I passed out water. I Thank Good. you, Andrew and... and Everybody that came, it was amazing. Uh, to see uh, the leadership that we have in this church, we are going places. Amen? Yeah. We are going places. I believe that with all my heart. 
So we want to come and gather. Would you do that with me? And let's just pray. And we're going to do a prayer like this. I, uh, they used to call it this. <laughs> I think what it, uh, I hear Joey said it last time, but it's it with popcorn prayer, you know what that means? Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to gather for a few minutes here, and we're going to pray whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Amen? And let's pray together. I want the children to come up here, and we're going to pray with Pastor Bob. Can we have all the kids come up here? And, uh, and, and come on, everybody else coming up too. Hallelujah. Yeah, you guys can sit right here. You want to sit right here? So you have to just, you just, just be quiet and listen, okay? We're going to pray together, right? We're going to, all these dolls are going to pray. If you guys want to pray, if you guys want to pray, we're going to pray together, okay? 